Hello again, everybody. Another cinnamon video for you, in case you haven't had enough yet. And in case you haven't noticed, I've really enjoyed cinnamon recently, and so I've been testing it out on just about every distribution I can. I installed it on Ubuntu not long ago, and then tried Arch as well. And I thought, let's try Tumbleweed, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed as well. It's another rolling release distribution where the packages are kept very up to date. And so on a system like this, you're going to have the latest software in almost every case. And that includes the Cinnamon desktop and the packages that come along with it. So the first step in installing Tumbleweed is to go to their website, to the OpenSUSE.org website, and say install Tumbleweed. And this brings you to the download page. There's a lot of different options here, depending on how you want to do this. My recommendation is that you install from the DVD image. So it's quite a large file, 4.35 gigabytes. It includes quite a lot of software that you're not going to use all of. So it may seem a little wasteful to do it that way, but in my experience, doing an offline install just tends to be a little smoother. Everything's there on that disk itself or on that image itself. And there seems to be less chance of things going wrong simply because the network install has the disadvantage of needing a relatively fast connection as well as a stable connection so that there aren't any interruptions. I tend to use the DVD and you can pick the mirror that's closest to you and it will take a little bit to download likely unless you have a very fast connection. But once you have it, it just makes for a smoother install. If you do want to get the network image, you can certainly do that. There's also different architectures that are supported. And finally, they also have live versions of different desktops as well. So that if you wanted to run a live version to test your system, to see how it ran, uh, just to see maybe how they have it set up. And if you like OpenSUSE before you commit to installing it, the live option is, is there for you to try that. Once I install the basic desktop, which I'll show you in the installer, how that works, you get a selection of different desktop environments that you can choose from. And I'll select the basic one so that I can come after that and install Cinnamon on top of it. I will use software.opensys.org to find the package I'm looking for, which will be the Cinnamon desktop and install it using their one-click installer, which which is actually one of the really nifty things about OpenSUSE is coming here, searching for software, being able to review it, read about it. And then if you want to install it, one click, it pops up and takes you through the install. All right. So I am going to do this in a virtual machine just because I'm just demonstrating the concept of how this works. So I've got my machine created. I'm just going to go ahead and start it up. I've got the ISO mounted. In case you weren't aware, most distributions that provide splash screens like this, if you're ever wondering what's happening in the background, you can just hit escape and it'll actually show you what's happening, the, the full boot process. This can be handy sometimes if things seem like they're taking a really long time or just never actually boot. So in this case, we can see that it's you know loading up the installation system and going through setting up the hardware. And finally, we get the installation screen itself. So the first screen you get to is the language keyboard and license agreement, which you're welcome to read, but it's mostly just dealing with the fact that there are laws pertaining to distributing software and things like that. The next thing it's going to try to do is initialize online repositories, which in this case, because we have the full DVD, there's really no point in doing. And it would also sort of defeat the purpose because there are likely going to be newer packages and it's going to have to download things rather than just using the local install, which is what I prefer. So in this case, I'm going to say no. If you were using the net installer, you definitely would not say no there because then you wouldn't have anything to install. It needs those repositories, whether they're local or online to be able to pull the software and install the system. And so here's where you're setting the desktop, as I mentioned, or you can just have a, a server itself, Plasma, GNOME, XFCE. I'm going to go for the generic desktop simply because I don't want the all the packages that come with these to be present on the system once I've installed Cinnamon. I really just want a bare bones base install and then be able to install Cinnamon on top of it. The generic desktop gives you some things that you're going to want on any desktop, like a, like Firefox and some Yast and some of the tools that are built, Xorg, and just sort of all the pieces you're going to need for a desktop. So having the generic desktop is a good starting point that is lean, doesn't have a lot of additional software, but still gives you the capabilities of a graphical desktop environment. Next step is partitioning, and it's going to take a guess at what to do 
based on your system. Of course, if you have a single install or you're using an entire disk for this, you can just let it select the disk and then let it do its auto partitioning scheme. If you're dual booting, you're most likely going to want to at least look at this and make sure that it's not doing something like destroying a partition that you need or maybe setting it in some strange order or something. So if you did need to change the partitioning scheme, you have a couple options. You can start with the current proposal, which means it's going to take these and just bring them forward into a partition management screen that you can then change the partitions. Or you can start with existing partitions, which means it's just going to read the partitions that are already on your disks and present them to you and allow you to then decide where you put the system. My suggestion is that you would start with existing partitions. That way you can see what's there and make up your mind about what you want to do with your partitions, particularly if you're already dual booting or more than dual booting and have a lot of different partitions, you probably want to be very careful and specific about where you are telling OpenSUSE to install. In this case, it's a single disk on a virtual machine. I really don't have to go through all of that. So I'm just going to say next and let it do what it's going to do. I'm going to set our time zone and locale. Then we'll create our user. Something that OpenSUSE does that baffles me a bit is that they have automatic login selected by default. That option is available in many installers, if not most of them or all of them, but in almost every case I've ever seen, it's never selected by default for obvious security reasons. I can't think of many situations where you would want a computer to not have any type of login. I mean, I suppose there, there are use cases for that, but in this case, I personally would never have a system that automatically logs in without my input. So I'm going to uncheck that and move along. This is another thing I really like about the OpenSUSE installer is that before it actually runs through installing, it gives you a detailed description of all the things it's going to do, where it's going to put the bootloader, what software it's installing, is it going to boot in a graphical or, or console mode, just all the way down through here, it's, it's showing you all of these things. Another thing that it does here, which is a little strange, is it uses Wicked, uh, which is more of a server-based network management tool. Um, not that you can't use it on a desktop, but it's more traditional to use Network Manager. So I'm actually going to switch to that and then say Install. And now it's going to pull packages from the local ISO. And even still, it's going to take somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes to do an install locally, which isn't unusual for a Linux distribution. Keep in mind, if you were doing this as a network installer, it would have to go out and get these thousands of packages from a mirror somewhere, and it's gonna take time, certainly depending on the speed of your connection, to go and pull all of those down, and it, the install can take quite a while, sometimes you know, 20, 30 minutes, maybe even longer, depending on the speed of your connection, where you are, and all of that. So this is going to take a few minutes. I'm just going to let it run and be back when it's done. All right. When it's done installing, the system will automatically reboot itself, which I'll just help it along here. Okay. So this is the basic desktop. I'm going to go ahead and log in and fire up the web browser and then head out to software.opensusa.org. And once you get here, you want to select the distribution you're running. So OpenSUSE has Leap and Tumbleweed, uh, amongst other things. But uh, Tumbleweed is what we're looking for. And Cinnamon. And this will show you everything in the repositories for Tumbleweed related to Cinnamon. And I'm looking for the just the Cinnamon desktop package itself. And the lovely thing about this, and one of the really cool things that OpenSUSE does, is through this portal, you're able to just do a direct install one click. And you see here, it wants to open up with Yast, one click installer. And then we're gonna, it's gonna show you where it's pulling it from, what it's getting, kind of warn you, hey, you know, make sure you trust this. And then ask you for a password. and then just go out and grab the packages. So very slick. 
you don't have to do it this way. You can use Zipper. Uh, you can use the YAS software management tool. If you're using a desktop environment that has a software center, they also incorporate. They also will integrate with uh, OpenSUSE's package management. But the website's kind of neat in, in my opinion, just because you can see all of the things related and be able to just grab what you're looking for. Seems to be a little bit easier in some cases to just find exactly what it is that you're looking for versus going through Zipper or one of those other methods. So this is gonna go ahead and just download everything in the background. When it's completed, we'll be able to just log out, select Cinnamon as the session we want, and log back in, and hey, presso, we'll have a Cinnamon desktop. OK. Finish. Go ahead and close everything, and then log out. And now, under our dropdown, we will have Cinnamon as an option. And just like that, we've got a basic Cinnamon desktop installation. Could use a little theming, a little polish, maybe a better wallpaper, things like that. I've covered most of those things in other videos, so I'm really not going to take the time here. And just really wanted to show you how easy it was to get Cinnamon installed on top of Tumbleweed. From here, you see it's pretty bare bones. Uh, you'd also want to probably go get basic applications like an image viewer and a video player, things like that. So uh, this is definitely a starting point, not, not the end result. But I think this kind of gives you the idea of how quick and easy you can get this up and running and then get started doing this for yourself if you'd like to give this a try. All right, I hope you found this useful and interesting and entertaining and all those fun things. And I appreciate you watching and hope to see you again soon for another video. Take care.